Good evening, culture lovers. You're listening to Rancid Sounds, the antidote to Britain's Got Talent. I'm Gary Bushell. Um, and I tell you what, we've got, we we're very privileged to have in the studio with us the jewellers, the magnificent jewellers. Hey. Oh, two of them anyway. Hey. Two of them. Representing the jewellers. And they're going to give us a, an acoustic number now, which is uh, King of Kings. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Now, tell me about the jewellers. Tell me about the, the history of the jewellers and how you came to be. A long history, Gary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, give, us, give us the quick, well, quick, quick version. <laughs> We've been going. My brother left the band uh, about a year ago. That was Simon. That yeah. was Simon. Yeah. He's got such a love for do-up and rock and roll, and we weren't doing enough for him as far as do-up and rock and roll was concerned. And we were going in the direction of ska and reggae. And to be taken seriously, you really kind of have to pigeonhole yourself and say, look, we're one or the other. So... Myself and the band, we've carried on under the name of the Jewelers. My brother's carried on as a side Cranston and doing rock and roll and do what. So, um, but yeah, we've been sort of, we haven't really missed a beat. I mean, naturally, the partnership, the Sam and Dave thing that we had going on has stopped, but you know, the, 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 the band has kind of met, sort of taken that space up. Peter, the guitarist, has sort of come in and, and doing his harmony. So we've kind of gone full throttle into Scar and Reggae because it's the audience is wanting that and we you know naturally it's what we love to do so it's kind of gone on from there so we've got um, the Prince Buster album coming out at the International Scar Festival at the Shepherd's Bush Empire on the 5th of May yeah first weekend uh, of May yeah. Uh, so yeah that tickets that, still available tickets still available to that <laughs> and then our big shows at the Indigo at the O2 Saturday the 9th of June um, and we've sold that out four times which is just under 3,000 people in the last two years so we're doing something right. If we'd have chosen a different genre of music and that they weren't turning up, then naturally I'd probably throw the towel in. But we're doing it, and as I said, four times in two years, and it, it, it's, it's just a joy to be playing the music and flying and you, the flag. You started as buskers, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still do a little bit of it now, but yeah, it's, it's a great way to, if you're going to sort of, you know, um, learn your, your, the skills of, and, and the tricks of the trade, stand on a high street. It sounds weird thing to do, but it's not like sit down with a dog and a guitar case and beg for money. It's proper amplified equipment, and we have to book in. So it's more uh, the word busking. It's more of like street performance. Yeah. And we get the mad thing about it is now we get people travelling from all over. Like we had when we were in Maidstone last, we had some people coming down from, I think that we had um, Leeds, Manchester to see us standing on a high street. You advertise your busking like gigs, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we have to now because people were saying it's only because of public demand. To be honest, I'm on a high street promoting where we're performing. Mm. That's one of the main reasons we're there. But 
when you hear people travelling from Leeds and stuff, it's three hours just to see you stand on a high street. You're like, look, I'm there making a living. I'm not. Mm. I just can't believe that people would travel that far to see us, but they have done. So it's kind of saying that we've got our honour, really. But but un- unlike most of the people who are guests on this show, you've actually had proper hits in the last 10 years <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to 30 yeah, years ago yeah, like yeah. Both. so how did that happen though I mean how did you go from busking to, to being on well, top my, of it was a lot of it. it was my brother's mastermind he just came to me and said look do you know what we've got a fan base of this many people do you know now if it was in the 60s it'd take quite a few hundred thousand to get in the top 30 but now it's, it's nowhere near that and when he saw the figures to get into the top 30 he said we could possibly do this we could busk our way into chart we won't need a record contract so he Hold on a minute, how much do you need to sell a week now to get the <laughs> Well, you got an album coming. Yeah, it's got, got the album coming album now. <laughs> I, it, it depends. It, it, it's like, very much, it depends on when you release it. If you obviously release it at Christmas time, to get to number one, you've got to sell quite a lot. But yeah, yeah. at a quiet time of the year, the Kipper season, January and February, it's a lot less. So it depends on, if you strategically find a time when to release the single, you can get a top ten hit probably with, I don't know, 20,000, oh, maybe 25,000. You, you, you get top 30 with 25,000. Yeah. Easy. So I think the three I think, to five thousand is all you need. I think we should get it out now or a well, single. Two thousand copies of your, <laughs> of your singles. So <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. You, you're the reason where we got <laughs> this. That's why. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> would you like to do us another song? <clears throat> we would love to do another song. This one's entitled Chinaman Scar. It's uh, it was back in the day. Um, Prince Bust had a, 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 a bit of a feud going on uh, with Derek Morgan, and uh, it was directly largely Tim. But we've taken out some of the lyrics. The feud's over <clears> now, but. I don't want to be uh, saying things on the airwaves that might come across the wrong way. So uh, <laughs> this is Derek Morgan's, uh, D- Prince Buster's version of uh, Chinaman Scar. <laughs> great song in itself but also an alternative commentary on the budget <laughs> the richer getting richer they're nicking it all up us the bastards uh, are you a bit, you're around for a little while you're not going to shoot off no you? no we're around if you right. we'll come back and talk to you. in the background we'll talk to you I wish we had more time to hear more from the jewellers but I wanted to ask uh, Tiber why are they called the jewellers with an A and not an E I, I'm assuming it's because there were two of you when you started so it was like a exactly jewel right. a vocal jewel one between of my the brothers bar me ideas from back in the day yeah. even though you are, you told me you were going to ask me this question yeah. I thought I'd come up with some witty line but I've not had the time to do it Gary so you'll have to forgive me <laughs> Pete I was going to ask you sorry, I haven't asked you your background tell us about what band you were in before then. Oh well I've played with quite a few of the, the reggae greats yeah uh, 
Lee Scratch Perry, Aswad, uh, Michael Rose, uh, Janet Kay, Carol Thompson, all, all the reggae boys. Uh, yeah. The jewelers. Yeah, yeah. But now my loyalty, <laughs> my loyalty is with the jewelers right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, all those legends, and yet. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he's I'm trying to help him become a legend. <laughs> <laughs> it can only be a matter of time. <laughs>